Hello world, what is up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte. We are here live at the Build Studio in New York City. It is that time of year, my friends. Nat Geo Wild's ninth annual Big Cat event is back, and this time it packs in six new premieres over three days. It all kicks off this Friday at 9, 8 central with the premiere of Man vs. Puma. <clears throat> my money's on the Puma. Uh, every year, the network shines a light on these majestic creatures to remind people of their struggle and their importance in our world. More than a television event, Big Cat Weekend is an extension of the Big Cat Initiative, a long-term commitment by the National Geographic Society to halt the decline of big cats in the wild. It's an awesome cause. That's why we talk about it every year and all the time. And here to join me in just a few short moments, my favorite big cat expert, the one and only Boone Smith is here. How about that, everybody? <laughs> Boone's back. Boone's back. We're gonna bring him out in just a second, but first, I believe we have a peek at his upcoming special, so let's go. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, Boone Smith, right here. We can make a little noise. <laughs> Thank make you. a little noise for Boone. That, how, how are you doing, Boone? Welcome back I'm to the doing, show. I'm I doing am well, thank you. so excited that you're here right now. Uh, I can't wait to talk to you a little bit about it. I love Big Cat Weekend, I love these shows, and uh, in addition to just loving you and having you here, you always bring some fun friends with you, which we're gonna get to in a little bit. So yep. we got a great day ahead of us. Uh, we got plenty of time. Uh, how's life right now? You're back from your trip. How long ago was that trip? Uh, so we worked on that, I guess it's our entire winter, but that was, wow. the seasons are different down there because we're in Patagonia, so we're Southern Hemisphere. So this winter and, and this spring, so we've just finished up there, I think the last go in May. Wow. So not that long ago. That's wild, man. How, <laughs> that moment, I was watching that and I was thinking about seeing you with your, with your binoculars and how you're, you're in the distance, you're watching from a safe distance, I imagine. And I was thinking as it happened, like what, what if the cat notices you're there? Like, how, and it seemed, you seem pretty chill about it in that moment that the mother notices your presence, but I feel like that would be terrifying if you're watching this, this beast, this beast of prey from a distance, and then it recognizes that you're there. Is that ever a scary moment when they notice that you're within range? Do yeah. you become the prey at that point? You know, one of the things, and down there, this was the draw to Patagonia, and, yeah. and to go there and see the pumas there is because, pumas just, I guess for everyone, it's mountain lions. It's just, it's the southern, cat, yeah. you know, so it's kind of the same cat we have here in the States. Um, but there's some behaviors that are different there in the sense that if we were to see a mountain lion here in, in the western United States, it would just slip away into the brush. And there's very little brush or trees or anything like that cover for them, but they've just become accustomed to, like, we're just part of the environment. Yeah. And that was the draw to it. So we've seen things like this, like with long lenses and cameras, you know, remote cameras, but then to be there and see the behaviors you know, kind of firsthand right there in front of you. And you would see them give you a casual glance and recognize, but we were just part of the environment. That's wild. And it was crazy because so many times we'd get a cat, we'd get eyes on a cat and we were working towards it to get closer, you know, cause we'd see it half mile away. Yeah. And another cat would walk into us. And all of a sudden it was like, oh, there's, you know, and, just, and it was on Passing a hunt and just going, yeah, just, it was, <laughs> just going through. It was like, all right, you know, so. Have you, have you ever been in a scenario where the, where the cat was less cool with your, with your like, being there? Where you I, know, like, looked at you and was it's, like, oh. It's the great thing about cats is they <clears throat> tell us. <laughs> they let you yeah, know. Yeah, I mean, all animals do. The body language, how they react, like, and, and they're telling us, you know, even when they walk, some, we had a cat walk by really close at one point. Like, didn't see it coming. We were so focused here. I was like, oh, here comes one. And. And, you know, as it recognized us, it just kind of gave us a look and, and deviated ever so slightly. And so they tell us what they're about. Wow. You know, we can, if you read the, the signs and the body language, you know where that line is. They'll make it very clear. It's pretty amazing. You've been doing this, uh, well, I want to say over 20 years, approximately yeah. 20 years, give or take. Yeah. And, and it looks like the, the joy and exuberance in your face when you're out there. Are you seeing things you haven't seen before? Like, are those first-time things that, you, that you're surprised by still after all this time? You know, I think there's probably two parts to that. Um, <clears throat> the, the, the first is that, like, things I've seen a bunch, yeah. I enjoy just as much as the first time. I mean, when you get to see a cat in the wild doing its thing, like whether you've seen it do that, or even if it's laying there sleeping. I mean, it's yeah. just cool to watch. Um, but the more we go, again, Patagonia, the draw there is we did see some behaviors that I've never seen before. Yeah. And that's always exciting. You know, you think we kind of have it all figured out and then you keep going and going. It's like, oh, I've never seen that. I've never seen that. I'm like, oh my gosh, I've really never seen this. Yeah. And that was the draw to Patagonia. We, we've got some stuff in the film there. Um, that's, that, that's first first captures for you. Yeah, like for me, it was like, wow, I just sat there like a kid, just in awe, you know? Yeah. At times I felt like I was, I don't care about the camera, you know, don't talk to me right now, I wanna, I wanna enjoy this. Yeah, yeah and just kinda take it in and, and enjoy the moment, yeah. and be present. And, and yeah, sort exactly, of, yeah. just take it in, take it in. 
It's, it's pretty amazing, man. There's, there, I want to say there's at least nine new specials. Yours is kicking it off this Friday yeah. for, for Big Cat Weekend. Tell it, for, for the folks at home, I mentioned a little bit of briefly up at the top, uh, before we get any deeper into the trip, just uh, what Big Cat Weekend is and, and why all these specials are happening at once and, and how Yeah, how great. Um, so obviously we want to show folks incredible footage. We want to yeah. show, we, I mean, there, and there are some amazing films. Um, but there's a, a secondary reason behind that is in, in watching and, and learning and hearing the stories, it's about understanding the plights that are going on with the cats yeah. differently in different places in the world. Um, some of them are endangered. Some of them are losing the battle. You know, we might not have them if we don't do something. So with, with Nat Geo and, and Nat Geo Wild, we have the Big Cats Initiative that also runs, that works kind of behind the scenes for all yeah. the films we're doing for Big Cat Weekend. And this is raising money to put into projects, research projects, education programs, on the ground stuff that makes a huge difference in conservation and management. Yeah. And so that's why I love being part of this. I mean, great films are awesome, and I'm so proud to be part of that, but then there's this next step that Geo does that is just, you know. Yeah. Yeah, no, the, the, the shows are a great way to, to, to raise awareness around the cause and all that. And, and you guys, you really put yourselves through uh, hell to make some of these, honestly. <laughs> and I think when, when we see the finished product, that gets lost. But I had pulled something from your Instagram, and I thought this was this was amazing. It was kind of a window. If we can bring up the first one in a second, a window into to what it's like. You you had a video you captured uh, while you were trying to sleep during uh, what it what, what it was like <laughs> trying to sleep at night. Uh, I won't tell anybody what's making this noise. Let's see if we can. <laughs> nightmare come back. I'm sorry to put you through this. Okay, now real quick, anyone want to venture a guess? Just shout it out. Does anyone have any idea what that might have been? Anyone? No? Donkey? We're getting donkey. That's what I thought when I first heard it. Anybody else? No. All right, donkey seems to be... Can I, all right, here's, here's the reveal. Let's take a look. These guys. <laughs> In fact, I think you said these two were the ones making the noise, a foot so, from your So bed. we had a little platform. <laughs> and for whatever reason, they chose that platform as their, their little hideaway, their refuge, their home. And, and we're in a, a nesting colony. And so there's 75,000 nests. So you start to do the math. We're <laughs> 75,000 75, nests. nests. Thousands of nests. So a <laughs> pair per nest plus some chicks. <laughs> and I'll be, I'll be honest, I don't know a lot about penguins, but I don't <laughs> think they ever sleep and they never shut up. How long would it, yeah, how long did that last, that video? That <laughs> was all up? night, that was all night. That was all night? That was all night. The, the, the colony is never quiet. And so it's one thing to be in the distance, but then these guys, like, so we've got literally a two by four in between our heads and they'd be right underneath and you're just finally <laughs> getting that spot and then, <laughs> and it's just like, oh. And then to top it off, you got mice everywhere. Like it was just constantly brushing off mice for the mice My at night. My God. The penguins didn't keep the mice away. And so it was after a week of that, I'm sure, I don't even know what we were saying. Or yeah, I mean, right? we were, we're a little bit sleep deprived, but. Would, knowing what you know now, would you say the, the footage you got, the experience, still worth it? <clears throat> Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, still, yeah. you do oh, it again. You do it again pa in a heartbeat. Patagonia, I, I love Patagonia. Um, yeah. I worked with some amazing cameramen down there. Um, uh, you know, you, you talk about we, we go through hell and we push the, the, the head cameraman that I worked with. He would joke at the end of the day, he's like, "Oh, we've hiked 20 kilometers." I'm like, "No, we didn't. We hiked five and we ran 15." <laughs> you know, because when you'd see stuff, you wanted to get you know in position because if a cat's working up a ridge, you wanted to get on the other ridge to get the shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're chasing it. And yeah, so we're just hustling and going, and it was. The, the crew was stellar. God, and to have to do that, and like pumas and, and large cats in general, pretty fast creatures, tend to be pretty nimble. They, they cover and, ground, yeah. And you guys they are running out go. there carrying how many pounds of equipment, running back and forth for days. And yeah, so, so the big one, he, he's got about a 60 pound camera and I'm My picking God. up about the 40 pound tripod and then whatever batteries and gear we've got in our backpacks. And at the end of the day, we were cooked. And a couple of hundred thousand penguins running around your ankles. <laughs> and, and, and penguins, yeah, going everywhere. So you got to watch out for the penguins. It's, it's unbelievable, man. I, I'm super excited to check that one out. There's uh, at least nine. I, I keep saying nine because I wrote it down. I'm pretty sure. Uh, but there's a ton. There's a ton of great specials. And the, I got a clip from another one real quick that I want to take a look at. I believe it's from the Tiger special. Let's take a look at that really yeah. quick. For a month. They look, so <laughs> <laughs> they look that way, right? They look that they way. Look That's that right. Way. It's they so hard to look way. at them and not think, my gosh, they're adorable. And I was reading the description. It's like, they're fierce little dudes. Like, the, they're like fighting for the throne and all these different oh, yeah, things. There's yeah. so much politics within their, their little community, their tiger community. It's, it's wild. Mother Nature's harsh. Yeah. You know, I mean, we see things like that. And they're cute and cuddly, but the reality is, I mean, it's a game of survival. If, if you don't, mm -hmm. if you're not good at your job, you're not there anymore. Yeah. And so it is. It's, you know, 
for, for any mother, all the big cat mothers that we have, and we're going to showcase quite a few actually in, yeah. in this year's run. Um, you know, they're great stories because it is, it's a fight for survival. It's a fight for life, and there's successes. Yeah. There's failures. And, and, but that's what I love about Geo is we kind of bring the reality home and yeah. give people a taste of what's out there. Do you get to work on the other specials as well? How big is the big cat community? Like, how, how tight-knit are you guys? It's, uh, you know, I, I feel like everybody's kind of connected. It's, it's kind of funny because I look at what I do, and I'm like, ah, it's just, you know, just not that big a deal. And, but when I meet and interact with these other folks, I'm like, oh, man, what you guys do with the tigers and the lions. Yeah. It's so cool. And so I think everybody kind of actually works that way. We're all fascinated by what the other guys are doing. Yeah. Um, and we kind of look at our own stuff as, you know, we're hoping we're, we're making a difference. But, man, people are doing so much cooler stuff. Um, but it's a tight-knit group, and it's, it's a focused group. It's a hardworking group. And it's, yeah, it's, a, it's a privilege and blessing to be part of that. That's pretty awesome. Well, speaking of a privilege and blessing, we've got some amazing guests with us that you brought with you, some buddies along yeah. here. I, I want to get to that because I want to have plenty of time because uh, I don't think we've had anything quite like the, these before. <laughs> and so this is uh, our first one here. If you want to tell us about our first buddy. Yeah, so just give you guys, so just every for everyone, we'll just kind of ooze and ooze the and grape, but we'll be yeah. as quiet as we can. So this is a clouded leopard, and this is one of our animal ambassadors from the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium in Ohio. And these guys are part of an, an awareness education program, and they're coming with us today to help spread the awareness, um, you know, give some insight into the, the lives of their wild cousins and make sure that the wild cousins also have a bright future. So we're super honored and privileged to have these guys here. Um, Stunning. Uh, yeah, clouded leopard. Clouded leopard. These yeah. guys are amazing. I mean, you, you look at the coat. See if she'll let me hear. You look yeah. at this tail. It's unbelievable. So these guys spend most of their lives in the trees. Really? Think about so all, we all know our cats are amazing climbers, right? Yeah. So then this cat's a freak. <laughs> like if you compare it to the rest, this it doesn't even it's not even the same ballpark. Um, the, she got a little different build. You can see she's a little shorter, short leg, kind of compact. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She feeds on birds, lizards, things, but she lives a lot of her life cruising through the trees. Um, they're found in Indonesia and parts of Asia. This is probably one of the least studied cats. Like we don't know a whole lot about them because no, of where they're at and they're in, say, they're in the rainforest because they're hard, they're hard to, to get to. How do you how do you go find and follow a cat in the trees? <laughs> Very careful. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? I mean, <laughs> it, it's it's not an easy thing. So, um, yeah, just an, um, amazing. And so we have the cats come along as our animal animal ambassadors, and um, you know it's one thing to see a picture and, and the films are yeah. great, but for the folks here, I mean, you're seeing this like this is. Well, that's just it. That's what gorgeous. I mean by uh, by blessed and like how many. Like, this is obviously the first one I've ever seen. I'm going to say speak on behalf of the audience. I don't know that we've all ever seen a clouded leopard in person before. And in, in your time, how many have you seen, Boone? Like how many have you? I've, seen? I've never seen a clouded leopard in the wild. <laughs> that's wild. You know, and you that's start insane. to think about them. We get, we start talking about cats. You know, you show the tigers, um, things like that. And cats that are endangered. They're, you know, there's very few. They live in thick um, cover remote habitats, Yeah. when you start talking about the job of scientists and researchers and managers to study and know, it's, it's, a, it's a chore. Like, that is a task to do. You just don't go out and sit down and watch and watch a cloud of leopard and find out what it does on a daily basis. Like, it's a lot of work. And, and so I, I think that's great to, to showcase that with people and let them understand that we think conservation is so simple. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and we want it to be. We really would love it to be. <clears throat> it's yeah. not, unfortunately. And so... To have the ability to, to go out and do that and have the knowledge to make good decisions is so important. Well, I want to thank. Well, and, oh, <coughs> oh God, that's okay. <coughs> I told oh. you it is live. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm gonna sit on this side we're, right here. We're ten the... minutes away from me making the same mistake. Honestly, <laughs> that's why the show's so short. But um, so <laughs> you know, you know. You noticed he didn't point that out when this was happening here on the couch. He didn't say a word. He just no, let it happen. It just happened. Yeah. Um, uh, we're going to bring our next guest. If, sure, why not? Yeah, let's why go. Not? Go for it. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's clear the stage because our next guests, uh, we've got Cullen and Deborah here. Now, deborah has been here before, yep. but this is the first time Deborah's brought Cullen along. Yeah. Uh, and Cullen uh, is, well, you want to explain hey, Cullen's hey, buddy. purpose here with Deborah? Yeah. So, Cullen, if you look at the side of his vest right here, he is a cheetah companion. All right, so we might look at that hey, and baby. think that that is really, Deborah. really strange. Sweetheart, gotcha. may I pet Deborah? I forget. Yeah, yes. Just, yeah let her know where, let her know where you're at. And... What's happening, darling? So cheetahs is a, a general rule, especially young ones, kind of lack in the confidence arena. Got little, it. A little self-conscious, for lack of a better term. Yeah. And so at, when they're young and, and they're starting to be raised, they get paired with the dogs because the dogs, is, she responds. He, he's the cue. Yeah. So if he's cool, she's cool. If he gets nervous, she gets nervous. And so they travel together. So it's almost like that, you know, he, he's the safety net. That's and so they get on. They, 
I guess I don't know really what she thinks, but I assume she thinks she might be part dog <laughs> because they play like puppies. Well, it's amazing. Last time, uh, last time Deborah was Roll. here, we had a video uh, illustrating the, this relationship and, and how they they bond when they're young and how they work together. And it's just it's another one of the. It's so incredible to have them both here together and, and to see them together at the same time. Deborah, of course, still mesmerized by the outside world. Yes, uh, that is that is what happens. Think, uh, typically. Things that move. Things yeah, that move. things that move. What do you say? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but and how old is Deborah at this point? About six months right now. Six months right yeah. now. So this is, you know, she'll grow. I mean, cheetahs were, they're famous for it. Seventy miles an hour. I mean, <laughs> fastest animal on the planet. It's unbelievable. I mean, and, you know, and so she's a youngster right now. But you can, you can start to see when she when she lays down, the the legs got to go somewhere. They're big yeah. and they're high, and the her length. Her push-up game is strong. Yeah, yeah. Did you see that? yeah she is. She is pretty built intense. For speed. She really, really is. Oh, cool. yeah, how do they do with treats? Do they share? Do they have different <coughs> treats? You know, different treats. Yeah, and they get along just like you would, you'd picture puppies, siblings. Yeah. So they get along, they have disagreements. Um, in no way does she ever look at the dog as prey. Like, they're just, they're, they're family. They're and just it's, friends. It's no different than our families. You know, sometimes we get along great. They play, they wrestle when they don't sometimes want each they other. They rest, tell yeah. the other one they don't want to, and they go their way. It's unreal, and cool. you know, I, I promised when I came out, I, I was surprised to see Colin when I walked in the room. I was delightfully surprised, and I came out in the audience and say I was beaming, and I said to them that we've never had anything like this on our stage before, and we certainly haven't. It, it really is a gift, and, and we are so grateful you guys are here. I believe we have some audience questions. We have three. Are, are Colin and Deborah cool to hang out while we do audience questions? Yeah. Can they stay with us? Because yeah. I think that'd be fantastic. All right, so we're going to do that. The microphone is right here. Come on over. I'm kind of afraid to go to the mark now, but <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um, okay, so this is kind of a silly question, but I see a cat and a dog here, and I know this is Big Cat Weekend, but for you personally, cats or dogs? <laughs> oh, I'm a dog guy all the way. Uh -huh. Okay. I am a dog guy. I, th I think if I elbow Deborah down the line here, here, I think dog. everybody, yeah. Really? Dogs? Three dogs all the way? Yeah. I mean, I love the cats, but like, when, when it relates to a person, there's no love like the dog gives you. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Really? Fair enough. And Fair enough. Most like the dogs. Yeah, and these, yeah, that's right. I remember we discussed it. The, the, they're most like the dogs, which is why the relationship works. Yeah. You're getting kisses. Oh, get out of here! <laughs> All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it. Oh no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Message received. All right, we've got a few more questions. Two more. Next one's coming from right over here. Go for it. Hi. Um, so my question is, when in your life did this passion for animals start, would you say? Was there like a certain like light bulb moment when you first decided that mm. um, caring and educating people about these animals was going to be your passion? Um, I, I grew up in the outdoors, so as far as a love for the outdoors and being in the wild and, and critters, I, I feel like my family instilled that in me. You know, part of just where I grew up from in, in Idaho, in the country, just kind of happened. But I don't know if there's a light bulb moment. There might have been a couple dumb lucky moments. Um, they just kind of fell into the right place, yeah. the right job opportunity, and went, I love this. I want to keep doing this. And, and yeah, I'm one of those people that's fortunate enough to, to do what I love and be part of some great things. And, and so I read in the thing, you didn't start off with Big Cats. You were doing a lot of like guided, not guided tours, but you were kind of like a... I was a river guide. River guide, that's yeah. what it was. I, I was you had something to do with water. You were a river guide. Yeah, so when I was younger, and from, in fact, if I look back on the choices in my life... Um, <laughs> Most of them have been driven by the decision of adventure. Yeah. I chased adventure. I, I mean, that's, that's a side personal note of all the things I get to do, that I love the adventure. Yeah. Um, love I love that we make a difference. We're involved in conservation and, and impacting things. Um, but personally, also, man, that's what I chased. And so the river guide, the, the short version is I met the folks who I got my first biologist job from while I was a river guide, mm. and it just kind of... Step kept by going step, from there, yeah. one thing one that led to another, yeah. And then here I sit with the cheetah. And, <laughs> sit you with know. the cheetah. <laughs> This is unbelievable. I love it. All right, thank you so much for that. We've got, I'm um, seeing here one more. Final question right here. Come on down. Don't be shy. Hi. Um, thanks for being here. Uh, do, can you describe any, like, uh, challenges that comes with filming unscripted television with animals <laughs> versus um, maybe other people? All of it. Um, <laughs> no, I, and, and that's, that's actually what I really love about it is, yeah, you can, we, we can know of an event that's taking place. So I'll, I'll spill some of the beans. So... Patagonia, pumas, penguins. Guess why we were sitting in a penguin nesting colony? Because we found out the pumas were coming in and, and eating the penguins. Yeah. Um, and, and we'd heard about it but never seen it, but how do you go and set up and do that? And so you know there's a storyline, but how it plays out you have no idea. And that's what I love about it, is along the way there's so many things where we're like, whoa, didn't see that coming. And, and that's, that's, that's just where you, I think, when it's people and it's set up, 
folks do it great, not my cup of tea, I'm not good at it. Uh -huh. And so that, that, I think that's the draw to the wildlife side of it too, is we just, you know, we have hypotheses in, in science on what's gonna happen and take place, and then we get to go test them, and yeah. you know, we're wrong sometimes, a lot of the time. That's but gotta be exciting. It. But it is, yeah, that's, yeah. that's the beauty of it. <laughs> oh yeah, these guys will wrestle and play, like, yeah, it, it's like a bunch of screwballs. It's so great. <laughs> um, you know, it's funny, when you said that the, the pumas were eating the penguins, there were audible gasps, yeah. Na Mother Nature is harsh. They're, it's they're totally cute a part and cuddly. Of it. They're cute and cuddly, but after. And a I'm week sure. Year, let me ask you, was there a part of you that felt better about it after they kept you up for days at a time? <laughs> <laughs> like you went in thinking, like, oh man, it's a real shame. I get it. Nature's gonna be what nature's gonna be. They gotta eat the penguins. But by like week two, you were like, you get know the what? Penguin. They got it coming. If, 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 There's ten <laughs> over here. Like you were telling. If, the if, if you played all the audio, when you'd see the cat come in and go to hunt, and we're <clears throat> and we're filming and watching. If, if you listen to all the audio, because they, it's surprised they, they would come slow. They were very selective. Wow. They'd walk by thousands of penguins before they'd see this is the setup I want, and they'd do it. That's wild. And the whole time, you hear me and the cameraman Alex, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. get it, get it, get it. <laughs> rooting, <clears throat> just, just rooting for the pumas. I, I'm, a, I'm a predator guy. I'll, I'll it, that's yeah, true. man, yeah. for sure. Did you, um, did you guys collect enough data at all to sort of observe what it was that made them so selective, or is that going to take years? Of no, time? yeah. So we, I, I think we witnessed um, twelve different kill events, and so that's yeah. not very, that's not a that's very not big a sample. Yeah, it's not, not a lot. Samples, um, yeah. A lot of them happen. I mean, the, the colony's big. It's two miles long. So wow. Right place, right time is pretty tough to pull yeah. off. Um, but you know, as time, I th we s definitely noticed that they actually, people want to hear this, I think they preferred the chicks, Aww, the young ones. Yeah. And I think, and my theory is, is because when the adults get their, their feathers, they're oily and greasy, you know, mm. so they're waterproof, yeah. and the chicks are fuzzy and they don't have that. <laughs> and so everyone goes, oh, that's so sad. God, even the reason why had to be cute. It's because yeah, they're yeah, fuzzy. Know, it's like, it's, come on, nature, give me a but, break. But, but that's, that's what I love about <laughs> that's it. That's what you know, it is. You get, you get put together a hypothesis and go out there and test it and see and, and yeah, nature's rough, but yeah. how cool is that that these cats have learned the timing yeah. of a nesting colony? Yeah, they've figured that over the years. This year, Big Cat Weekend, honestly, I, the theme, I believe, is we're gonna show you stuff that you've never seen before. It's amazing. That seems to be the theme. We've got lions, African lions that are like literally living in trees, yeah. climbing wow. trees, um, jaguars that are eating sea turtles. They figured out when the sea turtles come in to lay their eggs, and it's only a couple days, and they know when to come. And that's incredible to me. The, the yeah. adaptive ability is amazing. It's fascinating stuff, man. It's so cool. Uh, I, again, I want to thank you so much for being here, and thank you guys for coming back and bringing Colin and Deborah. This is incredible. Uh, Big Cat Weekend kicks off Friday, uh, 9, 8 Central, Nat Geo Wild. Uh, it's going to be amazing. I apologize to everyone at home because all of us here are going to hang out with Deborah and Cullen now. Uh, <laughs> but uh, thank you again. Remember, uh, no applause for our buddies, but just uh, ooze, ahs, snap your fingers, show your appreciation however you'd like. Thank you so much for tuning in at home. Uh, enjoy Big Cat Weekend. Uh, thank you guys so much yeah, again. Thank you, brother. Pleasure, Appreciate as it, always. Man. Such a pleasure. Thank you, guys.